Now we're going to get, get on to the next segment here, the concept of cloud seeding. It might sound like science fiction to a lot of us, but it's playing a very real role in the way some in Idaho are trying to boost the snowfall in the mountains that help fill irrigation pipes and reservoirs throughout the state. Aaron Coons headed towards the clouds for this often beautiful look at the changing face of water science in Idaho. Idaho is a dry western desert. Water is the lifeblood. But particularly here in the Intermountain West where we have a more arid climate, we depend on water. We depend on water for irrigation for our farmland. We depend on water for, of course, our own drinking needs. We depend on water for recreation, which is a big part of our economy here in the West. Through the years, our relationship with water has evolved. Innovation has harnessed water to power the Pacific Northwest as it tumbles through giant hydroelectric dams. You know, uh, someone once said that water's the new oil, and I think that's true. The mighty Snake River flows west, starting in western Wyoming and zigzags across Idaho. It helped carve Hell's Canyon, the deepest river gorge in the continental U.S., and past the Palouse. Eventually, it empties into the Columbia River in Washington and heads to the sea. Water drives this, the whole ecosystem. Without water, we have no ecosystems. But where does all this water come from? Some comes from rain, some from the giant underground Snake Plain Aquifer. But a lot of the water here originates in the mountains. The winter snow high on the mountain peaks in central Idaho and western Wyoming melt during the warm summer months and finds its way to the salmon, Boise and the Clearwater, eventually dumping into the Snake River and heads west. How we use the water here has strong implications all the way down to the, to the mouth of the Columbia. For nearly a century, we here in the West have looked for ways to help increase the water we have. Nothing is taken for granted. Cloud seeding has been around since the early 1900s. It's often misunderstood. The general idea is to bring as much rain or snow out of a passing storm system. But there are some who question how effective it really is. We caught up with a team from Idaho Power that cloud seeds up here all winter long. They say it works and brings valuable snow to the mountains. When you look at cloud seeding, it, it's a water management tool. It's not something that we use to eliminate a drought. Um, you can enhance what's actually falling naturally. Derek Blestrit is a meteorologist with Idaho Power. The utility pays for and operates two cloud seeding programs in Idaho. Today, there are 36 cloud seeding towers. This is one of them located on a mountain ridge above Idaho City. Derek Blestrud and Brando Glenn, a field engineer, are checking out one of the towers to make sure it works how it's supposed to, when it's supposed to. Well, what we're looking at is essentially a 26-foot tower with, with a lot of structure, with a, with a burn head at the very top. <laughs> and we're pumping solution and propane to the very top and burning it. The flame is burning a unique blend of propane mixed with silver iodide. The heat causes the silver iodide to rise into the air and into a passing storm system. It then bonds with water particles too light to fall as snow. As water particles gather on the silver iodide, it gains enough weight to fall to the ground. You can drop silver iodide out of an airplane or fire it into the air by cannon. But Idaho Power decided to use these towers instead, building them on mountain peaks not far from lower elevations. This is where you find orographic lift, air that charges up a mountain range. The quick rise in elevation causes the air temperature to drop and raises the relative humidity. This is where a storm is likely, and better still, where Idaho Power wants the snow to fall. If you think of orographic lift, there's not much happening down in, like, say, Boise itself. That's all happening as the, the wind hits the mountains, it lifts up and over. That's beyond Boise. That's back in the mountains. That's back in the Boise base and the Payette. And so we're starting to target that, that portion of it. 
Idaho Power's cloud seeding tower is powered by a small solar panel, providing enough power to run a satellite modem. That's so meteorologists can turn it on and off from the Idaho Power Building in downtown Boise. All right, we measure temperature and humidity at this site, and in some sites we have temperature, humidity, and winds, and pressure. So. Okay? And that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's not very dramatic. Cloud seeding isn't new. Some early projects here in the Northwest happened as early as the 1940s. But despite the fact that it's been around for decades, there are still questions about how effective it really is. Early on, cloud seeding was used to bring rain to irrigate crops. These days, it's used to coax more snowfall. Idaho Power is seeding clouds as part of its strategy to make sure there's enough runoff from melting snow in the summertime. That translates into water in rivers, and more water means more power generated from those rivers' hydroelectric dams. And when you start looking at Western water and how valuable it is and water rights, every cubic foot of water is valuable. That's Greg Clark, a hydrologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. The USGS measures the amount of snowmelt every year. He's at a 101-year-old river gauge on the Boise River. The reason it's important to measure river flow is to determine how much water to expect for agriculture, reservoirs, and even recreation. Every drop of water, I don't want to say has a purpose, but it, it, it is utilized in some way, whether it be by the environment, whether it be by, by humans, uh, it is used in some way and is a very critical part of the whole. Over the years, Clark has noticed a disturbing trend. The, the water is coming off earlier. It's melting in the mountains quicker. Perhaps that's why trying to coax more snowfall has become an important part of Idaho Power's business plan. Blustered says Idaho Power has done research that shows its cloud seeding is adding 15% of the snowpack. For every foot of snow that falls, that amounts to an extra two inches of new snow. If you think of if you get more snow packed that's higher, and higher up in the mountains, that's the stuff that comes off last. The deeper the snow is, the longer it stays cool in the spring and early summer, and that helps snow stick around longer. The benefits are immense, and there are many, many, many of them, not just making more water. It's cooling of the rivers, it's more water for recreation, it's more water to run through the, uh, our power generation system, it's, it's just more water. And the amount of power that can be generated um, from this is roughly 100,000 megawatts, which is enough to power about 7,900 homes for a year. Idaho isn't alone in its cloud seeding efforts. It's a big business in many western states. This is where cloud seeding is sometimes controversial. There was a time when it was thought that it robbed a storm of all its moisture. If Idaho cloud seeds, does it keep the rain or snow from falling downwind, say in Wyoming or the Dakotas? Idaho's attorney general in the 1960s threatened to sue Oregon over its cloud seeding program. Today, the science is still being researched, but that belief is now less prominent. The studies have actually looked into it and they haven't been able to find an impact downwind. They've either found a neutral or a positive impact. That's the focus of an intense multi-million dollar pilot project in Wyoming. The final result is due within the next few years. Here in Idaho, it may have fringe benefits that go beyond electricity production. For Idaho Reports, I'm Erin Coons.